Hi, this is a tutorial for ISC 6024, Advanced System Dynamics, how to do least squares aggression using Vensim, presented by Kevin Grove and Mike Stoyanos. Just to review, uh, least squares regression, linear regression, is, uh, is a modeling technique where if you have uh, several variables, uh, which are represented in this model as x, uh, x is a vector that represents uh, the different random variables that we're looking to fit a fit a, a line to, and so what we do is we multiply x by some coefficients beta, uh, a vector of coefficients beta, and we add in a standard error term at the end, and that will give us y, which is our <coughs> dependent variable. Now, uh, in order to solve for our estimator for beta, which is beta hat, what we want to do is utilize matrix operations using the vector x, which is a matrix when you consider the data points. And the estimate for this is constructed by taking the transpose of the x matrix, multiplying it by the matrix, the original matrix, taking that product and taking the inverse of that product, multiplying it again by the original x vector, and finally multiplying it by your values for y. And this will get you uh, a beta hat which suits uh, the, the quantity of minimizing the least squ square errors. So now Kevin is going to demonstrate in Vensim how we construct a model that will do this for us and compute a 95% comfort. Hello and welcome to our tutorial on how to do multiple linear regression inside of Vensim. We're going to start off here with just the basic terms of our equation. I'll start off by showing you our xijs which are going to be our independent variables here. So we're going to define our independent variables as random normal variables with a minimum of negative 3, a maximum of 5, and therefore a mean of 1. And we're going to set a standard deviation of 1, and we're going to choose 3 for our noise seed. So we're going to use these independent variables in our calculation of ultimately our dependent variable, y. So y is going to be uh, calculated based on several parts here. First is going to be this real b term a real coefficient, and we're just going to set a value of 2 for this one. It's also going to be affected by the error term, so we're going to pick a standard deviation for our error. We're going to pick 0 0.05. We'll use that to generate another random normal for our error term, and for this one we'll say a minimum of negative 3, a maximum of 3. We're going to use our error standard deviation uh, in our equation here, and again, we're just going to uh, have a mean of uh, zero based on a min or a max. So we're going to combine these into our dependent variable equation by saying that we're going to take our independent variables, x, i, j, multiply them by this real b term, 2, and we're going to add the error term. Now the interesting thing is that we can do this across multiple independent variables by using subscripts. So for our xij, if we go back here, you'll see that we have two subscripts here. i is going to be represented by the sample number, and j is going to be represented by independent variables. And each of these is a subscript that we have defined that allows us to have multiple elements. So let's go look at our subscripts menu and see what each one of these are. So I'm going to click on the subscripts control up here in the upper right, and we've defined these as follows. We have three different independent variables. We've called them iVar1, iVar2, and iVar3. And we have 15 different sample numbers. So you could think of this as taking 15 different samples of your experiment. However, we've only decided to look at the first 10 of them here. So we've defined them as S1 through S10. And then you'll see here in our equations when we're calculating our dependent variables, we're going to sum across the independent variables. So we're going to calculate one dependent variable for each set of independent variables, essentially. And the way we're going to do that is by adding this exclamation, part, exclamation mark here when we use the sum equations. So by adding exc the exclamation mark after independent variables here, that's going to tell Vensim that it needs to sum across all independent variables. And you can see here that the output is going to be yi, meaning that there's going to be one dependent variable calculated for each sample. 
So this is how we're going to start off with our equations. The next step is that we're going to need to do a little bit of matrix multiplication in order to calculate the estimates for y. So the first step of the regression is to take the matrix of independent variables, our xij, and get the transpose of it. So to do this in Vensim, we're going to need to basically switch our subscripts. So our original definition of xij was to have sample number as i and independent variables as j. So what we're doing here in Vensim is we're just going to output the reverse of the subscripts and switch independent variables and sample number. So this is essentially going to reverse the axes of our matrix. The next step is going to be multiplying that transposed matrix with xij itself. Now to do this in Vensim, we're going to need to do a little bit of a trick. So the multiplication itself is going to be done by summing across the sample number subscript and multiplying the xij transpose matrix by xij itself. Now the trick with Vensim is that the output of this would have independent variables twice, and we can't use the same subscript twice within an equation. So in order to get around this, you're going to need to define what's called a subrange. So I'm going to go back into my subscript control panel here. I'm going to go to my independent variables, and you'll see right here we have independent variables too. Essentially, it's a subrange that contains everything within independent variables itself. So it's a duplicate. And this lets us get around the restriction of having the same subscript twice. Essentially, we're having a copy of the same subscript. So this summation goes across sample number. That's again why we have the exclamation mark. And it's going to output a square matrix with independent variables and independent variables two as the subscripts. Step in our equation for the regression is going to be taking the inverse of the previous step. So Vensim actually has a function that we can do this with. It's called the invert matrix function. And it has two parameters. One is going to be the matrix that's going to get inverted, in this case, xij transpose times xij, along with the subscripts from the previous step. And the second one is going to be the element count, or the number of elements within the matrix itself. So this element count, and then we're going to use the independent variable subscript, is going to output three in our case, because there are three independent variables. So that will invert the matrix, and then we're going to use that in the next step, which is to take the inverted xij transposed times xij matrix and multiply it by the original xij transposed. So the math here gets a little bit ugly, but essentially we're going to do a sum of the previous step, the inverted matrix, times the original xij transposed, and we're going to sum across independent variables. The reason for this is that independent variables, as we've defined our subscripts, is present in both of those. So again, we denote that by using an exclamation mark here and summing that one out. And then the output of this is going to have the independent variables two subscript. So again, independent variables two is just the subrange of everything within independent variables. It's essentially a copy of independent variables. So it doesn't necessarily matter which one we output here. But because of the notation that we've used so far, independent variables two is the one output the way we've set it up. And again, this was also going to have the sample number So through all this manipulation of the matrix, we're finally able to get an estimate of b. Up here we have our real b term that we've defined as 2 in this case. However, we also have the error term. So what Vensim is going to do is it's going to estimate b, including the error, based on our y values and the output from our previous step, the inverse of xij transposed times x, multiplied by xij transposed again. So let's see what equation we have here for estimate of b. So we're going to have a summation again of those two multiplied together, and we're going to sum across sample number in this case. If we think back to what the b is, it's going to be the coefficient, and we're going to have one coefficient for each of our independent variables. So the output of this is going to be estimate of b with the subscript independent variables. So once we have our estimates of b, we can use these along with our original xij independent variables to calculate the estimated y. To do this, we're going to do another summation, again, 
we're going to sum across the independent variables because we should have one estimated y for each sample we've taken. And once we have the estimated y, we can calculate the actual error in our model. So we're going to take our um, real y values, combine them with our estimated y values, take the difference, again across sample number, because each sample is going to have a different y calculation, and see what the error is. Once we get the errors, then we can use this to calculate our confidence intervals. So the first step of getting towards these confidence intervals is having our s squared values. So in Benson, we're going to calculate that pretty straightforward. We're going to take the sum of all of our errors across sample size, square them, and then divide by our n value, which in Benson is represented by the element count sample number. So we're going to divide by the number of samples, essentially. And this is going to be a constant. It's going to have no subscripts attached to it. So once we have s squared, we can combine that along with this inverse of xij transpose times xij to create a covariance matrix. However, in this case, we're only interested in uh, the diagonal, which is the variances of each one of our independent variables. So for this, we're going to multiply our s squared times the inverse of xij transpose times xij, and we're going to have our subscripts be equal in this case, independent variables and independent variables. This is going to give us the diagonal, basically. However, again, because of our uh, restrictions in Vensim on having an output of the same subscripts, we're going to have to output independent variables too again. So once we have our variance matrix, we can calculate the upper and lower bounds of our confidence intervals. For this one, we're going to use a 95% confidence interval, which in a normal distribution translates to 1.96. So we have our estimate of B, which is going to be our mean, plus 1.96 times the square root of our variance matrix, which is going to get us our standard deviations. And then, for the lower bound, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to subtract, minus 1.96 times the square root of the B variance. Now that we have our confidence intervals, we can actually run a simulation in Vensim and see whether or not we have 95% of our trials falling within our confidence interval. So to do this, we're going to set up a parameter here called confidence check. It's going to be set up using an if-then-else statement in which any time our simulation calculates a B term that falls within these confidence, the lower bound and the upper bound, it's going to output a 1. And if it falls without, outside of these ranges, it's going to output a 0. And then we're going to accumulate these 1s and zeros within this stock of confidence here. So it's going to basically take all of the confidence checks over all of our simulations, and I'll put the total. Once we have that total, we can calculate a percentage based on how many trials we've run and find out whether or not we have 95% of our trials falling within our confidence interval. So in our model, we set up our simulation to run a, a new trial at every time step, and we've set up the simulation to run 1,000 times. So let's run Synthesim and see what our results are. So here we can check our confidence percentage, and we can see that it's changing over time, but all we, really, all we really care about is the value at the end, at the final time step, the 1,000th trial. So let's go into the table view and see what our value is and see if we've hit our 95%. So at the end here, you can see all of our values are below 90%, which means that our estimate of B is actually not very good because of the error in this problem. Uh, we would expect to have about 95% of our trials fall within the upper and the lower bounds, but instead we're getting about 90%. So these are too low, and our estimate of B is actually going to be a little bit off here. So this concludes our tutorial on how to do uh, multiple linear regression within Vensim. If you wanted to make some of these terms explicit and have them uh, draggable within Synthesim, you can externalize them. Uh, we basically just picked values for our our normal distributions, but you could have those adjustable within Vensim if you wanted to uh, be able to play with your model as you, uh, as you change the values. All right, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, we hope that you learned a lot from our tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, any kudos, please send us an email. Uh, you can email me at mikesty at vt.edu or kevin at kgrove at vt.edu. Thank you very much for watching.